Hello and welcome. My name is Justin Davis. I'm an interventional cardiologist from the Hammersmith Hospital, uh, which is part of Imperial College. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this interventional cardiology review in association with uh, Radcliffe Cardiology. Today we have the pleasure of having uh, Corrado Tamburino, who's a professor of intervention uh, at Catania University in Italy. Yes. Uh, and also, of course, a world authority in intravascular imaging with IVUS. Yeah, very gentle. I'm not a world authority. I'm an <laughs> interventionist, so uh, that uh, I'm a an user. So, using this uh, technology, I acquired some experience. So, how, so how important is IVUS use for you? IVUS. Uh, so, IVUS is a very, very important. Uh, at least uh, in the last years, we acquired a lot of uh, information confirming the utility of uh, this uh, tool in, uh, uh, during coronary interventions. And particularly in the last years, we uh, understood that the use of uh, IVUS is uh, even more important in BBS era, where uh, we don't see the scaffold, so we need to have uh, further information and supplementary information for uh, achieving a good result. And uh, despite that, we know that in Europe, the use of uh, IVUS is restricted to 5% of uh, uh, the whole number of procedures. Uh, this is related to several factors that we can discuss if you want. Yeah. So that, that's a very interesting question. So you, you say there's a real need for IVUS imaging, but yet only 5% of the doctors in Europe are actually yeah. using IVUS regularly. Why, why do you think that is? I think that there are several reasons. Uh, mainly, uh, you know, interventionists are uh, animals. They do the same job, you know, like uh, in the same way for years and changing the habits is very complex in a setting such as the cat lab. So you do the PCI always in the same way yeah. to change. First. Second, the cost. Uh, we know that uh, when you do, uh, the more you do, the more you spend immediately. Although you save in the general cost analysis in the uh, global health service, but uh, in your hospital, if you do an IVUS, you spend more money and more time. And uh, third, uh, I think there is a psychological factor which is important because uh, when you treat a coronary patient, uh, regardless the stent deployment is uh, correct or not, you get an immediate success. So you don't care what happens one month, six months, one year later. So you can stop the procedure. Uh, saying, okay, it's good, and you will never know if the patient will do uh, uh, good or not in the follow-up. So these three reasons combined uh, make the use of uh, IVUS lower than it should be. So that's a very interesting point. So in, in your final point there is he's saying that we finish the case often, we've, we've got an angiographically nice result, and you say, great. Yeah, great. But really what we should be thinking about is how that patient's going to be doing in one, two, five years' time. And that's really where the IVUS may be making a much bigger difference. Yeah, yeah. and also there are some um, studies uh, I can uh, tell you about the adapt ds which is a study that uh, analyzed mm -hmm. the uh, user and the resistance to antiplatelet therapy. But there was a subgroup of 40% among 8,000 roughly patients that uh, used the IVUS. Mm -hmm. In those uh, patient, 74 in 74% of these cases, the interventionist changed the way to implant the, the, the stent, changed the direction. So, post dilatation, one further stent, uh, or um, correction of the overlap, or extension of the of the uh, the length of the stent. So, it is important because with the angio angio angiography is an archaic. Uh, system for uh, coronary angiography for coronary interventions. We use it because it's the best way, it's a simple tool, it's, uh, it's reliable because you see the anatomy of the coronary arteries, but for stenting is archaic because we don't see inside the artery, we don't understand if the stent is well implanted, bad implanted, is the lesion is full covered or, or other. Yeah. Well, I mean, personally, I'm always, I agree with you, I'm always surprised whenever I use IVUS that you often see a very different um, image from the IVUS catheter yeah. that you do from the angiogram. Yeah. So that really leads me on to, you know, where should we be with our IVUS usage? We see 
people like uh, Dr. Park in Korea, SJ Park, yeah. who has mandated Ivers Hughes as yeah. his institution for 100, almost 100% of people. Yeah. Do you think that that's realistic or do you think we, we need 100%? So, I don't think we need 100%, but a high percentage is. Uh, Dr. Park, SJ Park, in his experience, uh, has reduced dramatically the number of stent implanted and the lesion treated by IVUS and combining with FFR in some cases. So uh, he did an integrated analysis, a more functional analysis, and so he understood and he discovered that uh, many lesions that we treat shouldn't be treated, first. Second, uh, the more IVUS you do, the more you save in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, long-term results and then of costs because uh, you know that when you have a malaposis stent you run the risk of a scaffold or stent thrombosis yeah. uh, and so you have to keep the patient for long term and do antiplatelet therapy uh, you redo angioplasties uh, you have suboptimal results that are determinant for stenosis especially in bifurcations or in small vessels and sometimes you don't understand which is the true caliber of the artery so I'm impressed in many cases where I implant a stent and I think that the stent is well implanted and they want to check with the iris that in almost all cases I'm not right. I have to post the late, I have to change something in the procedure. It's uh, impressive. I do 20-30% of iris, but I think that we should do more. Yeah. So even with your lifetime's experience of doing a lot of angiography, many, many stent implantations, you're finding very, very frequently your clinical decisions are changed. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I would say, I use IVUS when I have some concern. So there is a bias. So when I have no concern, I don't use IVUS, but I don't know if That's right. the implantation is correct. But when I think, oh, I want to do IVUS, always something wrong. That's there is good. something wrong, always, almost always. And it is true. That, I mean, that's very interesting. And so it, it, it's essentially you're taking a few more moments at some part of the case to benefit the patient yeah. long term. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And when you have a well opposite stent, you can stop the dual antiplatelet therapy even one month later. Uh, this is something that uh, more, many of the stents are uh, indicating yeah. one month or three months of that. But uh, if you are sure that the stent is uh, well opposed, it's uh, much better. It's much better.